Hello, I'm Rook. I'd like to welcome you to the table. Thank you for joining me on this series and my journey to become a miniature painter. Let's go to the table and let's get started. Okay, so today we're gonna to be painting the giant spider and egg clutch. I chose a giant spider because it is more of a simpler model. It's a larger model than some of the miniature humanoids. Not a lot of detail, not too much detail here. I think this is a great one to get started with. As you can see, this one is primed paint ready out of the box. So most of these WizKids ones are primed paint ready. If it wasn't primed, I would go through the priming process, but we don't have to. This is primed and paint ready. So a really good selection for somebody that just wants to jump right in and paint. Let's go ahead and open this. So there are two pieces. There's the giant spider and then there's the egg clutch. Here's the base. We'll be gluing that on. Here's the egg clutch. Not too much to paint here. A little clear there, brown base we can do. Okay, and here is our giant spider. Some detail there on the bottom. Base is pretty large, but not too many details there. Should be able to kind of paint right over this sucker. A good beginner's paint job. All right, so I'm just gonna run through the paints that I'm using today. Everything that I have is super low cost, easy to get into. So guys, I'm jumping right into this like you guys could. Let's start with the paints that I'm using. Very simple. This is Nozure's Marvelous Pigments Underdark paint set. This will run you $24.99. You can get this at Just Games, Rochester, and other stores if you choose. As you can see, it comes with a number of colors there are a few different sets here this one features a little bit more of a darker kind of more sinister color scheme so we're going to be using that to paint our spider i think that's a very good combination additionally this one does not come with a white so i did pick up an army painter matte white as well now the D, &D marvelous pigment set this is made by the army painter so it's not some one-off generic brand these guys know what they're doing let's move on to the brushes I have a few different brushes here, just so you can kind of see, they all work the same. But we have a layer brush from the Army Painter, another kind of base brush, also from the Army Painter, and this was about a $3 detail brush from Michaels, so it works very well. I've already painted detail with this, and I find that's working very well. And then we have random brush found in my basement. This will be for our dry brushing and any sort of kind of large sweeping we need to do. So I'm just using those four brushes today. I have my wet palette prepped here. Very simple, easy to do yourself. As you can see, this is a Tupperware container. There's paper towel on the bottom and parchment paper on the top. Some water poured in and sloshed around just so, so that it is a nice glistening wet palette. It's gonna keep the paint longer in case you need to go back and make multiple coats. You can pop it in the fridge, pop it back out. You have the same color scheme you were using in case you're doing any extra mixing. Okay, got our wet palette camera there. So you'll be able to see all the paints as I dispense them into the palette, and then we can get started with painting our miniature. So, back of the box shows it as a cute pink with red, some black stripes there. I'm going to try and not copy that. I'm going to paint it a lovely blue. I think I'm going to use a selection of blue today. I do like the black stripe. And let's get some white for some highlights and just lighter colors here. So the main blue I'm going to be painting it is this Xanathar blue. And then the darker is going to be the Lich blue. So let's go ahead, shake these well. First time I'm using this particular blue, so I wanna make sure that it's shaking well when it's new. And let's put some on the palette, okay. Next is the Lich Blue. Some there. Okay, you can always add more. Don't dump all of your paint onto the palette. You won't need it all, I promise you. Then we have a little of the Jorgar Metal some right there. And this set also comes with reds, silvers, browns, yellows, kind of this sickly swamp green. I was hoping to paint it kind of a forest green, but we don't quite have that. And I'm not too confident in my mixing abilities just yet. So we're gonna go with the blue. And then we have some white. Put the white over here. And we might use a lot of white, so let's get a little more in there. Okay. Oh, and I almost forgot. We're gonna want our base to be brown. So we're gonna use the rigid leather brown for the base. Let's put the brown 
right over here. Okay. Looks like a pretty big palette for just that much paint, huh? Yeah, you really don't need a lot. Even though this is considered a bigger model. But let's get started. If you guys are first timers, haven't painted in a while, don't paint too often, I recommend you paint along with me. I hope that you all have your brushes and your paints, and let's paint this miniature. Let's actually start with this base brush, a little bigger, not too much detail. And we're going to dip into the lighter blue, and we are going to start painting the legs and kind of the, the, uh, the abdomen here. One other tool I like to use is a small wooden dowel. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to place the model on the dowel so that I can hold it while I paint it. This dowel was a dollar at Michael's and it was much longer. I cut this into several pieces. Of course, you can buy the official Citadel dowels or the official Citadel bases, which hold your model much better. But for now, this is going to work. And additionally, you can secure your model to the dowel with any sort of sticky tack or maybe a double-sided tape. I have these double-sided adhesives also from Michaels. So a lot of these things you find at Michaels is kind of a, a general kind of catch-all for the any sort of crafting hobby, like these sticky pieces and the dowels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a couple of these pieces on the dowel. And of course, there are official miniature options for these for the wet palette. There is a wet palette that is specifically sold, so you don't have to put this contraption together the whole time. Obviously, there's the official Citadel base to hold your models on. It has a certain clamping feature that you can use to make sure you got the perfect grip, no matter what model it is. And of course, you could use something like Scotch double-sided tape, but I have these double-sided adhesives. So hopefully these work well enough for me. The model's a little bigger than the ones I've been dealing with, so let's pop that right on, and that should hold our model. Okay, so unless we're wing, swinging this around violently, our spider's going to stay put. So now I'm not touching the base, so I'm trying to paint the base, etc. Let's move the light just a little bit over here. Okay, there we go. I should be able to see that. So let's dip into our light blue. Just going to start with the legs. Now the thing is, you don't have to put too much paint on the model because you don't want to get rid of the detail. A lot of details on miniatures that you don't want to lose by putting too much paint on the model. So let's paint these legs a pretty bright blue. Like I said, this model is already primed out of the box. So if this wasn't a primed model and maybe this was like a Warhammer set of uh, multiple characters, what you'd have to do is you'd have to apply, apply most likely a spray primer to them before you can even get here. But these are out of the box ready to be painted and primed. So that is great for beginners. There are some that are painted all together, which that's also great for those that just want to take it out of the box and play D&D, but not for us that want to paint. As you can see, I'm still on the same first glob of paint. It really doesn't take that much. Okay, so that's kind of one side. And now there are some spots that I'm kind of leaving in its silver that uh, we might have to go back through with a detail brush, as you can see kind of right down there. Let's tackle the other side here. That's the best part about painting the miniatures yourself. It can be whatever color you want it to be. It doesn't have to be the scary red spider or the sickly green spider. This is going to be a bright blue spider. Still just as scary if you encounter it in the wild. So I hope your initiative rolls are high. One thing I also want to mention is that um, I am certainly not an expert when it comes to this. I'm actually just sort of getting back into the hobby. Painted a little bit a couple years ago. Definitely want to make sure we get all of those little nooks and crannies. We can go back through the, with the detail brush if we need to. I don't want to accidentally clip the base here, although the base will be darker, so it's easier to paint over with the darker. But like I said, we don't want to lose any detail.
All right, and as you can see, it looks like we're gonna most likely need to apply more coats, multiple coats, just to kind of get that color solidified there. But those are some bright blue legs. The tips of these will become our secondary color, that darker blue. We can really paint this as many colors as we like, but I just wanted to keep it to just a few, especially for any of the newbies out there that uh, might feel overwhelmed at multiple colors. Especially, you know, if you're painting a miniature um, a humanoid with armor, hair, a lot of different colors there, it can be easily overwhelming. So we just want to go with our kind of three color spider. Have our cup of water here and let's clean our brush. Let's move on to the dark blue. Let's paint the back of this sucker. So we're going to get our dark blue and what I'm going to do with the dark blue is I'm actually going to paint the entire back and then we can go back over it with the black once it's dry. It's an acrylic paint, so it dries rather fast. And then it's easy to go back over with a darker color for the stripes. And I think we're just gonna do the top half of this, the lich blue. As you can see, gonna need a little more paint or of course more coats. Now, very careful not to clip what we've done with the blue, the light blue with the dark blue. That becomes hard to fix. Everyone's prone to mistakes, but just kind of be a little more patient with your brush strokes. Okay, so now here, we're going to have to get really in there. Let's see what we can do. It's looking pretty good. It's an interesting spider. Let's see if we can kind of darken this up. Now we're just kind of spreading it around. Maybe wait for it to dry a little more. Okay. So the underside will be dark blue, but before I move away from my dark blue, let's get these. Little pincers. Okay, yeah, we want those the dark blue, and we'll get, let's see, what else do we want the dark blue? Oh, you know what? We'll want to come around and kind of touch up the legs with the dark blue, but I think we need to apply a little more, a sec, maybe a second coat of the light blue here, but I think that we want our whole head to be the light blue, and these to be light blue, and then we can touch up the spikes with the dark and then the fangs and the eyes will be black. So I got too excited switching to the dark blue too early. Let's go back to the light blue and let's finish up what we have here. Now we might want to switch to the detail brush at this point, but I think we can get away with using this brush still for the head. And it's okay if I paint over the eyes because I will be able to paint over them with the black. In fact, I should just cover this whole thing in the light blue but not too much to lose the detail. Of course, in this case, the detail are really just the eyes here, but then you go down into kind of the, the fangs and we wanna make sure we keep those. If you guys make mistakes, that's okay. I make plenty. I'm surprised I haven't made one yet, or maybe I have and you guys caught it and I didn't. But, you know, sometimes the mistakes kind of is what makes it special. If you really don't like it and you're a perfectionist, you can always strip it. But I like to let the mistakes come. Sometimes mixing colors is a, a happy accident, in the words of a wise man.
I could probably be a little more generous with my paint, but I really don't want to skew that detail. Okay, so you can see there's like still a little bit of the primer gray sticking out that I want to cover, but I don't want to overpaint. Okay, so now you can feel that that, uh, that dark blue is already dry. So we'll be able to go back through. We can define our lines a little better. First, I just got to finish up that underside. Shoot, I did not want to grab that clear part. looking pretty good let's break out our detail brush I'm just gonna clean my base brush really quick let's use this three dollar brush from Michaels let's dip into our dark blue okay a little bit of dark blue right on the tip of that brush and let's do some uh, some detailed spots so I want to try and get these in. Very tricky. Don't want to touch that light blue. It'll make it a lot harder to get it uh, to get that color off. Let's try and get around here. Okay, you can see. It's a little better around here now, right where the blues meet. What else can we touch up with this one? Let's try and define our line. And let's take our base brush. Let's just go over this one more time. The best part about the acrylic paint, it does dry. You think you gotta wait and then do a second coat, but uh, you're already fretting over some detail. 20 minutes goes by and all of a sudden, hey, this is ready. There we go. Looking good. Go back to the detail brush with the dark blue and let's try, I say try, let's try and get these darker. Okay, yeah, a little, little accent there. Our blue accent and now let's try and go through oh, let me just get a little more here oh a little too much see that so a little shadow there but just splashed a little too much there oh going back and forth it gets easier as you get better 
but let's just try and kind of smooth that over. Okay, that's gonna be black anyway. But while I have the light blue, let's just go through these legs one more time before we start adding the dark blue accents. Okay, I think that's enough light blue. Let's just leave the brush as is because I think that what's going to happen next is going to require just detail. Let's get a little dark blue here on the detail brush. And let's see what we can do with these legs. Hmm, white blue is a little wet still. Probably should have thought of that. Well, let's try and get some dark blue accents here. They don't all have to be even. Sometimes the legs could be all sorts of all over the place. We could have done polka dots on the legs. We could do really whatever we want. We just got some darker spots right kind of where the, the bends are. There we go. Look at that. Well, some accents on the legs there you can see. See that uh, dark blue accents on the legs. That's very nice. This is looking pretty good. We've got the accents right here. Okay, I think, you know what I'm going to do? I want to give them little socks. I want to give them little blue socks. Let's just give them a little, some blue socks. Oh, or would that look better black? Hmm. That's interesting. You know what? Let's stop right there. Let's clean our detail brush. I'll wipe that down. Okay. Let's dip into our black. And touch the fangs just barely. And a little black fangs right there. And let's make the eyes. There we go. Um, oh, don't want mine to be too big. All right, that looks good, right? Look at our spider. Look at his little eyes. This is really coming together. Okay, now let's give him little socks, but I decided I do want him to be black. Let's bring him little black socks. We don't need the dark blue. A little more sinister, a little more darkness with our spider. He's like a pretty happy blue spider right now. Let's give him some sinister socks. And we touched our base just a little bit, but our base is going to be a brown, so I'm not entirely worried about it. Let's keep giving our boy some socks. Little black socks. Looks like he's been walking through mud. Okay, got his little black socks. Now let's give him his stripes. Let's give him his stripes. What brush do we want for this? I'm thinking two black stripes. Detail brush is probably the safest, but it'll take a little longer. So an expert, go for that base brush. Um, 
Actually, you know what? I'm an expert. Just kidding. But I'm going to go with the base brush anyway. So this is dry. We cleaned this. Let's make sure it's nice and pointed. Let's dip into our black and let's make our stripe. Love that shiny finish. It's a really nice finish. Okay, there are our stripes, but look at that, not uh, not perfect. Let's see if we can. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two black stripes on our spider. Now what? Let's see, looks like we should paint, we could probably paint the base now, and then we'll have to go through and do just a little bit of a second coat, third coat in some places. We gotta clean our base brush, just use the black. There we go. Okay, so our base is going to be brown. So we have our brown here, and let's just get into it. Let's just get right into it, and let's just start painting this brown. This base is tough because you have the whole spider under it. It's not like a humanoid where he's stepping on a rock or something. You gotta really try and get under the whole thing without accidentally brushing the brown against any of it. Some of the legs are touching. Yeah, probably gotta get in there with a detail brush. But for now, we can just kind of cover as much as we can. Yeah, look at that. There's our spider's base. Huh. Now that I think about it, the brown doesn't really work well with the blue, does it? <laughs> Wonder what other ground, oh, you know what? A kind of a green foresty ground, maybe. Well, we could paint over it. Nah, let's keep moving forward. Okay, so now, this spider's pretty bright, but let's see if we can add some highlights. Let's put in a little more dark blue. Just a little more. Let's try and do some dry brushing. Let's use the base brush. Clean that. Let's try and mix some of this blue with some of this white. Kind of have a lighter blue here. All right, we're going to try the dry brushing technique. We have our dry brush here. And we are going to dip it in this light blue. Mm -hmm. Really get it on the brush, and then we are just gonna take most of it off the brush, and then let's try and swipe it across this dark blue spot and see if it gives it some kind of white ish highlights. Kind of see some of it just gently coming off the brush to kind of highlight the dark blue. There are, there are tons of ways you can do this. Everyone's going to tell you a different way. But I think it's working pretty well. Can I see some of that white that came right off there? That's kind of nice. Gives a little more texture. Okay. 
let's try and do some white dry brushing on the legs. So let's clean our dry brush. Okay. Okay. Let's dunk it. Let's grab the rest of this blue. So this white there. I don't want it to be just pristine white. I want it to kind of keep some of the blue. But yeah, there we go. That's a good color. All right, let's get rid of most of that. And let's just sort of brush it onto the legs. Okay, and you can kind of see some of the white came off there. Looks like light is hitting the spider on its legs. And right here on the top. There we go. Okay. I'm about to call this done. But before I do, let's just touch up the base a little bit. So base we can kind of do whatever we want with. Let's try and throw down a little more paint just to see if it's going to kind of cover up and make it just a little darker. It already has some natural highlights just from kind of still being wet, but we know that's going to dry. So <clears throat> move over to the palette cam. Let's take some brown and white and put it over here. Ooh, a little white, a little more brown. There we go. We got this kind of nice, mm, like a mousse and a brown there. Just reminds us of like an ice cream. There we go. Okay. So we could dry brush the base, but I am just going to lightly kind of swipe with the base brush. So here's the base. And let's just put a little, put a little brighter color in. Kind of all, every such which way. There's no right answer. Kind of make it look like it's got a little character, a little light. You don't want the base to be lighter than the model because you don't want to draw attention to the base, really. It's all about the model. But you can add some accents here. Okay, here we go. All right, this is our spider. This is our completed product. Could we add more detail? Certainly. Might I go back and add more detail? Eh, maybe. I like the accents on the white. I think that the blues worked really well together. I like the little black socks. I think it was all in all a good one. So is this model a good beginner's model? Yes, I believe so. There's not as much detail as a humanoid. Um, painting this part was really fun. Obviously the black stripes, you can do whatever. You polka dots, stripes sideways, horizontally, however you want to do it. You can make the legs all one color. You can make it kind of a two colored spider um, leg wise, or you can just paint every leg a color. I don't know. Do whatever you want. But it's a really, really good kind of introductory painting model. It's a little bit bigger than most. It worked really well for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm no expert, but I am learning and trying to get better. And I hope you guys are learning with me and can take something away from this. I appreciate everybody that's watching. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.